Good morning. I'm in Northern Illinois and I'm riding the Grand Illinois Loop. The Grand Illinois Loop is a 535 mile bike route in Northern Illinois that extends from Lake Michigan all the way out to the Mississippi River and back again. It's mostly bike path, but some of it is on backcountry roads. It goes through some of the best features that Northern Illinois has to offer. So, come on along. We're riding the Grand Illinois Loop, and it is pretty grand. Good morning. It's October 1st, and I'm out bike touring. Stayed at the Holiday Inn Express last night in Carroll Stream. It's right next to the Great Western Trail. It's a beautiful day. It's a little bit warm for October, though. Since it's Sunday morning and the weather's nice, there's going to be plenty of people out here enjoying the trail. I'm going to start here in Carroll Stream on the Great Western Trail. The Great Western Trail leads to the Illinois Prairie Path, and the Illinois Prairie Path leads to the Fox River Trail. I'm going to follow the Fox River Trail north to McHenry, then I'm going to take a sharp left turn toward Rockford. I'm going to go through Rockford, Freeport, and then out to Galena. Galena's in the northwestern corner of Illinois. Then I'm going to take another sharp left and go south along the Mississippi River toward the Quad Cities. From the Quad Cities, I'm going to head east again along the Hennepin Canal and then the I&M Canal and end up somewhere near Joliet. But the Grand Illinois Loop goes all the way downtown Chicago all the way to the lakefront on Lake Michigan. I'm probably going to cut it a little short and finish up in Joliet. That's the plan anyway. But the sun is shining and the wind's blowing out of the south which helps me out a little bit. I'm going to follow the Fox River Trail north along the Fox River through Elgin, Carpentersville, and Dundee. Being this close to Chicago, there's lots of people that enjoy spending their day out on the Fox. The Fox River is a beautiful river that seems to have been loved to death by modern development. And I'm going to keep going north toward Wisconsin and finish up in McHenry today. It's a beautiful day out here on the Fox River. It is Monday, October the 2nd, and this is day two on the Grand Illinois Loop. Last night I stayed in McHenry, and today I'm headed for Rockford. This morning, I was on trail for a little while, but that won't last for long. I'm starting here today on the Prairie Path. The Prairie Path goes all the way north to Richmond, but I'm going to shortcut it and take to the back roads, through Wonder Lake and into Harvard. But I got a good early start. I'm not used to these short days. It's after the equinox, so there's less than 12 hours of sunlight per day. And I'm just not used to that. It just means less goofing off time. It's not all bike path up here. Today I've been mostly on roads, but I've been riding on real quiet country roads with very little traffic, which is nice. Northern Illinois is a glaciated landscape, but it's got rich farmland, lots of corn and beans, and dairy farms. Northern Illinois is kind of known for agriculture. Went through Harvard, Illinois this morning. Stopped and saw Harmilda. Yeah, she's a cow. Stands right in the middle of town. Celebrate the Harvard milk days. You can tell Harvard's a farming town. They love their dairy cows. I picked up the Long Prairie Trail on the other side of Harvard. But I'm back on trail now. There's plenty of prairie path for everyone. A fen is a small but unique plant community. It's kind of like a relic of the Ice Age. A fen contains some rare plant species that you don't normally find in a typical prairie. And I'm kind of hopscotching from trail to trail. And right now, I'm on the Long Prairie Trail between Harvard and Rockford. And I'm going to finish up the day today on the east side of Rockford. Good morning. It's Tuesday. It's October the 3rd, and this is day three on the Grand Illinois Loop. I stayed in Rockford last night. It's the home of the Rockford Peaches. You remember the Rockford Peaches? It's like the league of their own. Tonight I'm headed for Freeport. Should be about 40 miles or so. I'm keeping the days short. Crossed over the Rock River this morning. Rock River is a beautiful river. Too bad it's not what it used to be. Another river nearly loved to death. 
But I got through Rockford this morning. It was about 10 miles across. And now I'm on the Pectonica Prairie Trail, headed west through Winnebago, Pectonica, toward Freeport. It's gonna be another bright sunny day. Warm too. Freeport is known for their pretzels. You know, the Freeport pretzels. I guess they used to have a pretzel factory here. I don't know if you can hear the geese in the background, but there's a lot of migrating birds in this area, especially this time of year. Good morning. Today's Thursday. It's October the 5th, and this is day four on the Grand Illinois Loop. Last night I stayed in Freeport. Today I'm headed for Galena. Took a day off yesterday. Get me some fresh legs. It's gonna be about a 50 mile day or so, but I got a good early start. It's nice and cool this morning. It's only supposed to get up in the 70s. Started off on the Jane Adams Trail, but I'm not staying here very long. After about five miles on the Jane Adams Trail, I'm headed west on county back roads. Between Freeport and Galena is the Illinois Driftless Area. Yeah, Illinois has a Driftless Area too. And there's lots of hills, steep, mean hills. Not real long ones, but some of those hills are like hitting a wall. 10 to 12% at least, and some even higher. They're not your normal regular hills. These hills are mean. They're short, but they're mean. Take your breath away. Northern Illinois is a lot of farm country, but they like to hunt and fish too, a lot like their Southern Illinois brethren. It's a beautiful day here in Northern Illinois, and I gotta get down the road and over these hills. Took a ride through Apple River Canyon country, one of the several wonders of Illinois. Galena is one of the coolest and oldest towns in Illinois. It's really old timey. It looks like a Hollywood movie set, but it's for real. But it can get a little bit crowded with tourists, especially on the weekend. And Galena is the home of former president Ulysses S. Grant. We're in Grant country now. It is Friday, October the 6th. This is day five. Stayed in Galena last night. Tonight I'm headed for Fulton. It's gonna be about a 50 mile day. At Galena, we turn left along the Mississippi River. Follow the Great River Trail all the way down to the Quad Cities. But it's been raining on and off all morning. Yeah, I thought all the tough hills were behind me. South of Galena, we're more tough hills. I mean, these hills have to be at least 10 or 12%. I'm not ashamed to say that I had to push my bike up a few of those hills. My legs just aren't strong enough for that. I went down one last big hill toward the river and ended up south of Blanding's Landing on a nice gravel road in the floodplain. Finally, no more big hills, at least for now. The weather's completely changed. It's supposed to get cold, like highs in the 50s. But it was cold and rainy most of the morning. And then when I got to the Mississippi Palisades, just north of Savannah, the sun came out. So I put on some dry clothes, ate some lunch, and then it started raining again. But now the sun's coming out again. Crazy weather. The Mississippi Palisades State Park is like one of my favorite places along the river. South of Galena, you're still on roads for a while. I picked up the Great River Trail in Savannah, just south of the Palisades, and followed it south along the Great River. I'll be riding along the Mississippi River for most of the day. There's a railroad that runs along the river. It kind of cuts off access to the river in most places, but there's some nice riverside parks that provide access to the Great River. The Mississippi River is a flyway 
meaning it's a navigation route for migrating birds. Lots of migrating birds this time of year. There's always an abundance of birds along the river. Keep an eye out for bald eagle. I tried to outrun the rain, but I wasn't successful. I was booking down the trail as fast as I could, and the rain just caught up to me. Fortunately, it was just a light sprinkle. It didn't last very long, and I got a little bit wet. But I'm on the trail. I got a reservation in Fulton tonight. And the hotel's right next to the trail. So I'm in no hurry at all. I'll catch you down the trail. Good morning. It's Saturday, October the 7th, and this is day six on my Grand Loop. Last night I stayed in Fulton. Fulton's right on the Mississippi River. Today I'm following the Mississippi River south, and tonight I'm headed for Geneseo on the Hennepin Canal. It's just east of the Quad Cities. It's gonna be about a 50 mile day. It's kind of a cold, windy day, but at least it's not raining. The sun is shining a little bit. Usually I'm looking for shade, places to get out of the sun. On a cold day like today, that sun feels good. Warms up my bones. The wind is cold. Saw a bald eagle this morning flying over the river. But I'm back on bike trail. It's the Great River Trail. Days are getting shorter, mornings are getting colder. Getting started, it's a little bit later too. Daily mileages are shorter. Today I'm probably gonna get about 50 miles in. But that's what I've been averaging on this trip. With about three hours less daylight to ride in, it makes a big difference. Plus, I like to goof off a lot. Go nice and slow. I had lunch in Port Byron, a little pub on the riverfront. Well, the good thing is, at least the big mean hills are behind me. At least I hope so. I'm out of the driftless area. I'm along the Mississippi River. Oh, there might be a couple hills left, but the big mean crazy hills are finally behind me. So, here we go. I rode the Great River Trail south, a nice paved bike path from Fulton all the way to Hampton, just north of the Quad Cities. I left the Great River Trail at Hampton and rode east across the Rock River to find the Hennepin Canal Trail at Kelowna. And now I'm on the Hennepin Canal Trail, heading east. But it's a beautiful day here in October. Yeah, it looks and feels like Halloween. Just east of the Quad Cities in Kelowna, you pick up the Hennepin Canal towpath. That ends at the Illinois River near LaSalle, Peru. Then you gotta jump on some roads, and on the other side of LaSalle, Peru, you pick up the i &M Canal, and that takes you back into the Chicagoland area to complete the loop. But tonight, I'm stopping in Geneseo. All right, we're on the Hennepin Canal Trail, and east. Good Sunday morning. It is October the 8th, and this is day seven. I'm on the Hennepin Canal towpath, and I'm headed east. Last night I stayed in Geneseo, and tonight I'm headed for Princeton. It's only gonna be about 40 miles or so, but the weather turned cold and cloudy. Following the towpath on the Hennepin Canal is pretty nice, except today they're having an ultra marathon race on the towpath. They're calling it the Hennepin 100. I've already seen some of the runners but I don't know if the towpath is going to get clogged up with runners or not, but I'm just going to keep riding. For the first few miles, there were plenty of lily pads choking the canal, but that didn't last long. After that, the canal was open water. But the canal is a nice oasis for peace and quiet. It's real tranquil just riding along the canal. No cars, no trucks, just the birds and the turtles.
Yeah, so this is an aqueduct. It's where the canal crosses a creek. It's like a bridge filled with water. Pretty crazy. The canal is still used for recreational purposes, like fishing and boating. The towpath is level. It's not like a rail trail. Rail trails sometimes have grades on them that go up and down, but a towpath has to be level, except where the locks are. A lock is where the canal steps up or steps down, depending on which way you're going. That's the only time you either gain or lose elevation. Other than that, the towpath is almost completely level. But on this Grand Illinois Loop, I think the Hennepin Canal towpath is one of the highlights of the trail. But short day length means short miles, unless you're going to push it. And I think in my case, I'm not. So it just means short miles. But I'm out here bike touring on the Hennepin Canal. Tough to beat that. For tonight, I'm stopping in Princeton. Good morning. It is Monday, and this is day eight on the Grand Loop. Last night I stayed in Princeton, and tonight I'm headed for Ottawa. Ottawa's on the Illinois River. But I had to leave the towpath to get to Princeton, where there was a hotel. It was about five miles off the route. But now I'm back on the towpath. I'm gonna follow it all the way east to Bureau Junction. That's where it ends. I'm still on the Hennepin Canal towpath, which is really pretty, especially early in the morning. Colors are changing. You can hear the geese in the background. And the air's just a little crisp. It's cool this time of year in the morning. Except for the geese. It's pretty quiet here down on the Hennepin Canal this morning. You're gonna have to ride on some roads today to get through La Salle, Peru, and pick up the INM Canal on the other side. They told me it can get dicey going through La Salle, Peru. So I'm gonna try my best to get on some quiet back roads. Stay off the main highways as best I can. But when I get to La Salle, Peru, I'll be following the Illinois River east toward Joliet. Well, all right, I'm in La Salle. This is the INM Canal. It goes all the way to Joliet. Across the river from Ottawa is a state park called Starved Rock. Small creeks have cut some really nice canyons along the Illinois River. And today, I'm just going as far as Ottawa. It's just across the river from beautiful Starved Rock State Park. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It's October the 10th. And this is day nine on my Grand Loop. It's also my last day. Last night I stayed in Ottawa, and tonight I'm headed for Joliet, and that'll be it. My wife's gonna meet me in Joliet, and we're gonna go home. Right now I'm on the INM Canal. It's not just scenic, but it's also historic. Starting in the 1830s, it took 12 years for immigrant workers to dig the 96 mile long canal by hand. Since 1848, the INM has been used to move goods in and out of the city of Chicago, connecting Lake Michigan to the Mississippi River, a major link in commerce that helped Chicago grow into the big city that it is. The INM Canal closed in 1933. It was replaced by better waterways, railroads, and highways. Before steam and diesel power, mules were used to tow barges along the canal's towpath. This once vital link in the nation's transportation system is now a national heritage corridor and an excellent bike path connecting Chicago to the Quad Cities. The trail surface is varied from asphalt to chunky gravel to smooth crushed stone but overall it's very well maintained. And in some places the trail narrows 
to single track. And it's basically natural surface. Yeah, mud. Luckily, it's dry out here today. But if it's raining, I imagine it can get pretty sloppy on that natural surface single track. Following the Illinois River east to its beginning point, there's some beautiful stretches along the trail, passing by several natural areas, like Gephardt Woods and Shanahan State Parks and the Displains River Conservation Area. Keep an eye out for wildlife, especially water birds. At the confluence of the Displains River and the Kankakee River is where the Illinois River starts. The i &M Canal follows the Illinois River, basically from La Salle, Peru to Joliet. And I'm going to finish this ride today in Joliet. All right, the Grand Illinois Loop. Who would think there'd be Grand Adventure right off the front porch of the Chicagoland area? It's awesome. The city and suburbs are riddled with trails, and I'm sure there's a trail near you. You'd think it would be boring and uninteresting, but Illinois has got some neat places. It's like a week-long bike touring adventure right off your own front porch. And it's mostly bike path, and what's not bike path is pretty much quiet backcountry roads. It takes you through the best scenic places in northern Illinois. Follow the Fox River Valley in the northern Illinois farm country near Harvard. Drift through the Illinois Driftless area. Go through Galena. Then follow the Great River Road south to the Quad Cities and turn east. Pick up the Hennepin and i &M Canal Trail and follow it back to Chicago. And that's the Grand Illinois Loop. What a cool bike route. Tell you, if you live in the Chicagoland area, the Grand Illinois Tour is definitely worth doing. It's got a variety of hills and level roads. Mostly trails, but lots of nice old back country roads too. Anyways, thanks for coming along with me on the Grand Tour. Hope to see you down the trail. Thanks for watching. Now go ride your bike.